Hi, in this video I'll show you how to distinguish between the different chi-square tests. The goodness of fit test, the test of homogeneity, and the test of independence. Here's the key. Look only at the observed data. Meaning the sample and variable that the researcher collected. If the question talks about some pre-existing distribution or proportions or something, ignore that part. Save it for later. To figure out which test it is, just look at the observed data for now. Here's an example of a goodness of fit test. At a certain college, typically the grades in an intermediate algebra course would be 30% pass, 32% fail, and 38% withdraw. For a random sample of 120 students in Professor X's intermediate algebra classes, the grades were 30% pass, 25% fail, and 45% withdraw. Is there sufficient evidence that the pass fail withdrawal rate in Professor X is statistically different from the college as a whole? If we draw a side-by-side -side bar graph or a side-by-side -side line graph, we see Professor X and the college as a whole have different grade distribution. But the question is whether it's statistically different or are they still statistically pretty much the same? How well does the observed bar graph in orange fit the existing bar graph in blue? That's why we call it a goodness of fit test. How well do they fit? Back to the problem. The goodness of fit test usually gives you some observed data on one variable and asks you to compare to some theoretical or pre-existing proportions. In this case, it's between Professor X's class and the college as a whole. Ignore that pre-existing part. Ignore the part about the college as a whole. Concentrate on the observed data, the data we collected from Professor X's classes. There's just one sample the 120 students of Professor X. And it has one variable, the grade. That variable has three different values, pass, fail, and withdraw, but it's just one variable. And we're asked to compare with the overall percentages of the whole college. Visually, the observed data can fit into one column of a table like this, or one row like this, but just one because it's just one sample and one variable. By the way, when I count the rows and columns, I only count the data. I don't count the labels. And if there's a row of totals or a column of totals, I don't count those either. Multiply the percents by the sample size of 120 students, we get a table of observed frequencies like this. Still just one row. Therefore, here's the rule to recognize goodness of fit. In a goodness of fit test, the observed data consists of one sample and one variable. And if displayed as a table, the observed data fit into one column or one row. Now let's take a look at the other two tests. Here's a preview. If it's either two samples or two variables or more, then it's not goodness of fit is either homogeneity or independence. Suppose we look at the grades in intermediate algebra again, but this time we separate the fall semester students from the spring semester students. In the fall, there's no break until Thanksgiving near the end. Whereas in the spring, there's a week of spring break in the middle. So that's why you want to separate them because maybe it matters. Suppose here are the results. You can tell there isn't a natural way to make this table into just one row. You can force it like this, for example, but it's not natural. The passing students are not together. The failing students are not together. The withdrawing students are not together. 
it's more natural to make a two by three table like this. That's the telling sign of the tests of homogeneity or independence. They work with a table that's more than just one row. We call it a contingency table, sometimes also called a cost tab. There will be at least two rows and two columns. There isn't a natural way to make it into one row or into one column. Let's write down as a rule. Tests of homogeneity or independence use observed data that's a contingency table of size 2x2 two two or more. That's the difference with goodness of fit. So far so good. Now, do I know if this is homogeneity or independence? No, I do not. To distinguish between homogeneity and independence, I need to read the text of the question to see where the observed data came from. Just looking at the contingency table like this, I can only say there is not goodness of fit. I cannot tell between homogeneity and independence. Let me show the two types of questions side by side. Assume the table is given further down the page. Both questions have the same introductory part. Professor X teaches several sections of intermediate algebra each semester. She wants to look back and see how students did in class, separating between the fall and the spring students. Now, on the left, we have this. She takes a random sample of 100 fall students and a random sample of 100 spring students and checks their grades. The results are shown. And then the question prompt follows, but I'm blacking it out for now because I want to show you how I do this even before I know the question prompt. And on the right, we have this. She takes a random sample of 200 students, half are fall students and half are spring students, and checks the grades. The results are shown. What kind of tests are these? Let me give you the answer first. I can tell even without the question prompt that the problem on the left is a test of homogeneity and the problem on the right is a test of independence. Can you see the difference between them? Maybe hit pause and think about it. You can see the difference in the wording. On the left, the word sample appears twice. On the right, the word sample appears just one. That's the rule. Let's write it down. A test of homogeneity uses two or more samples. A test of independence uses one sample but two variables. Don't forget again that we're looking at observed data only. Let's talk about this a little bit more. Let's look at the full question from the left. Example two. The question prompt is now revealed. Do fall and spring students have the same grade distribution? You can tell this very clearly talking about two groups of people. And the question stem very clearly talking about the two samples being collected. The word homogeneity means same proportions. Like in homogenized milk. Milk comes from thousands of cows in dozens of farms, but they're separated and remixed so that every jar of, say, whole milk has the exact same proportions of water, lactose, fat, cream, protein, etc. Thus, a test of homogeneity means to test whether the proportion are the same between two or more samples. Or the proportion of pass fail and withdraw the same between fall and spring students. Now let's look at the full question from the right. Example three. The question prompt is: Does it appear that the grade distributions are different depending on the semester? It's talking about two properties: what grade a person gets versus what semester the person was in. Two variables on the same person. The first variable is the grade, the second variable is the semester. And it's asking is one variable depending on the other? Well, the word is depending. So yeah, 
you can sometimes use the question prompt to determine which test. However, I have seen too many questions with ambiguous question prompts, so I'd rather recommend that you look at the data collection process. Let's look at the rules again. Did the researcher collect from one sample or two samples? Two samples, test of homogeneity. One sample, test of independence. My way of remembering it is the letter I in independence looks like the number one. Are we good? Here's the summary. Read the question carefully and focus on the data collected, the observed data only. If one sample, one variable, goodness of fit. Observed data can fit into one row or one column. If observed data require a contingency table at least two by two, it's not goodness of fit. It's one of the other two, either homogeneity or independence. To distinguish between those two tests, read the stem carefully for how many samples were collected. If one sample and two variables, independence. If two or more samples and one variable, homogeneity. There are some additional properties also. In goodness of fit, a pre-existing or expected distribution is given. In homogeneity and independence, expected distribution is not given. Instead, use technology to calculate the expected distribution using the formula row total times column total divided by grand total. Independence usually uses the word dependent or independent. Homogeneity usually uses the word same proportions or same distribution, but warning, goodness of fit also does that, so be careful. Let's do one more run through of the questions we've seen. Here was example one. There's one sample, the 120 students. One variable, the grade. Goodness of fit. Here's example two. There are two samples, one of fall students and one of spring students. There's one variable, the grade, either pass, fail, or withdraw. Homogeneity. Here's example three. There's one sample, but two variables. The students are separated between fall and spring, so semester is the first variable. They're also separated by pass, fail, withdraw, so grade is the second variable. One sample, two variables, independence. All right, here's the summary table back again. Hope all of this helps. Any questions, ask in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe for more contents. Click on the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching. Bye.